Hi, this is Art Detective. It was Martin Scorsese who once said, "Cinema is a matter of what's in the frame and what's out." This is true for any genre of cinema, <laughs> particularly comedy. The problem is we only appreciate the things that are in the frame, but not the things that are. In any masterful comedy film, two elements are essential. First and obviously, physical comedy. There's moving in a funny way, body language, sarcastic stares, like to see? deadpan expressions, daring stunts, and obviously, this. The second element is what makes the jokes more powerful. visual storytelling when i say visual i mean the way the camera captures those jokes it may be a sudden zoom in a camera pan are they still there slow motion and then there's the kind which i like to call the invisible comedy like remember the time when mr bean played a hit the head master game with sponges before going from a 0 to a 100 fairly quickly he throws cans a cereal box And yep, it's really funny as hell. But then, had we seen Mr. Bean lift the chair, the joke wouldn't have landed as hard. But because we don't see it, the unpredictability catches us off guard. We were invisible to Mr. Bean's next course of action. Hence, we are left in stitches. This is the strength of filmmaking. We can control what needs to be shown, how it needs to be shown, and when it needs to be shown. Now don't get me wrong Rowan Atkinson is an absolute genius his physical comedy one of the greatest of all times is unmatched only by his inspirations like Charlie Chaplin Buster Keaton and most notably Jacques Tati The problem is that people don't really appreciate this hidden magic of filmmaking that in some cases even enhances the power of Mr Bean's physical misadventures We notice it and laugh at it but don't really acknowledge it so today let's take a closer look at Mr Bean from this new angle and appreciate this art of the unseen let's go It is common knowledge now that every joke has a setup. Let's go outside. Let's get some fresh air. Let's run around a little bit. Followed by a payoff, which is like the punchline. Mr Bean has a slightly different approach to this. You do have the setup to a joke, like a wheelchair gone rogue about to topple a kid into the lake. But the payoff is not visual. And then there's the kid getting in the way of an overreaction. <laughs> Funnily enough the jokes don't stop there. And in the same way we forget about the kid in the lab by the time we are in art class. So it's funny when this happens. This is the style of Mr Bean. The jokes do play out in the same format as all jokes do, but there's a missing link which is always visual. We know what exactly has happened in that link, but it's left out visually. Of course life will be so boring if you always follow the rules. Why not bend the rules even more like having the setup be completely invisible to the audience so that the final punchline when exposed comes out as a hilarious twist. Four, <laughs> One of the many running gags in the show is this notorious blue Reliant Regal who is like an antagonist to Mr Bean or maybe vice versa given how much he suffers. It's notorious because you guessed it we never see the driver. Unable to judge the true intentions of the driver, we the audience feel an air of mystery and unease. The same uneasiness that makes Mr Bean resentful of the driver. Now why does this work? Why does not showing something make it even funnier? This has to do with POV. No no I mean point of view. The first point of view is of course that of Mr Bean. Sometimes Mr Bean remains oblivious to the chaos he is unintentionally causing. So this ignorance becomes part of the joke. The next point of view is that of other characters. We know what is going on but when we switch to another perspective of that same event 
the absurdity of it all really stands out and the final point of view is that of the audience itself which is probably the most important you see mr bean is as put by atkinson himself an anarchist i i was imagining him as a 9 year old boy that's how i always see him they're sort of anarchists at heart really and i think that's what mr bean is he's an anarchist he obey the rules as long as they suit him he can sometimes be mean cruel ignorant of other people's problems and make matters way worse so to underline this chaos mr bean makes it unpredictable by keeping things out of the frame the frame itself is like a glass window peering into the world of mr bean and the audience is looking inside with fascination at the many antics that unfold as soon as mr bean leaves the frame the audience waits in absolute anticipation as to what he is going to do next as soon as he enters back Thank you. The audience is left in stitches. Point of view matters because it makes something relatable when it is in our vision, but it takes a whole another meaning when it is not. Because our imagination is stirred, we become active participants of that world, and this is instrumental in making us feel the chaos and unpredictability of Mr. Bean. Now, Mr. Bean is not the first work of filmmaking to do something like this. It's just that Mr Bean has perfected this technique to cleverly serve the character and story itself. It is an integral part of the story even if it is mostly remembered for its physical comedy. So remember, next time you're watching Mr Bean, just ask yourself, what is in the frame and what is 